Welcome, welcome to our Arizona News Show. We got all the hamsters spinning in the background, running all of our equipment, and uh, I am. Uh, we've got our names up here, so we don't even have to tell you who we are. Um, except uh, uh, just a reminder that uh, not only is Pat ruggedly handsome, and we talked about uh, how the chat uh, program sent him a polite letter t- telling him he could no longer be on the show. We managed to negotiate a settlement. And Pat will be on like this from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Poor Pat. Poor Pat. <laughs> so, it's all but, fun. Uh, yeah. It, you know what, Pat? I'm going to start with you because it's just been a wild few days. I'm not even giving you any warm up this time. It's like dive in, buddy. Because um, it's uh, the right picture that I'm seeing. Um, it's it kind of, was it unexpected? Yeah, I, th- I mean, it, <clears throat> well, today the market, uh, the ten year, the five and a half was down five basis points. Uh, we've been seeing this short term uptick in rates, and um, yeah, I think it was somewhat unexpected by the markets. Um, I think the markets kind of settled in that inflation was on its way down. We saw retail sales up like three percent in January. Um, Barry had said that uh, that kind of you know, spooked the markets a little bit, but we've been in this little, you can see here, right, uh, right here. I mean, let's see, I could blow it up a little bit more um, or back it up, but we've been, you should see this right here in this increase the last week. And um, like I said, I think it's been because um, the feds and the markets have been playing, like I said, last week, been playing chicken with each other. I think the markets said, Hey, we're going to see inflation coming back down a little bit. But the, and the Fed said, you know what? You know, I think the market said uh, the Feds will probably start backing off. But the Feds are just going to hold pat or hold steady here. And I think um, rates started rising and it became, you know, came after the labor, the labor market data came out February last week. And I think the markets are just kind of reassessing their outlook for the short term rates, you know, that are controlled by the Fed. And I think, um, you know, short-term rates, you know, are going to be kept a little bit higher than normal. Um, you know, Barry thinks that of, I was... Uh, I've had a lot of requests for me to tape this back on the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Um, Even if it I, was I one day. <laughs> just one day, yeah. Yeah, one day. But I mean, I, I was surprised you know, I to gotta find believe. out... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I, you know, I think, I think, I think... Um, you know, uh, you know, I think everybody, I think the markets were a little surprised by that. That's why we're seeing this bump in rates. I mean, if you look at it, um, I'm just going to show the, I'm going to throw the rates, a rate chart. Um, I just pulled up rates. Um, if you can see it here, this is basically for a $550,000 purchase, 5% down, 780 credit score. But now, uh, now do I don't have to blow, blow this up. Do I, Rick? I can blow, blow it up in post-production. Okay. Yeah. Um, but at six and a half, I mean, we're looking at six and a half as a cost of fourteen hundred dollars now, where it was a couple of weeks ago. We were looking at at five nine nine and six. That that would be a cost of seventy three hundred to eight thousand dollars. So in the last week and a half, your costs, if you're looking in the low sixes, like I said, I locked a couple of people at five nine nine, and uh, but now it's a cost of eight thousand dollars. So that that bump from five nine nine to six. Was probably that's realistically a about. Drop? Yeah, no kidding. I'm yeah, I'm still getting over my cold, um, <laughs> but that's that's an increase of about two hundred dollars a month, just from that uh, six wow. to about six and a half range. That's two hundred dollars a month. Wow. So that you know that that's once again it goes back to elasticity of demand on these rates. Um, you know, just how easily they bumped up, and I know for a fact. On Mortgage News Daily, they said that um, the average across the board is six and three quarters. And you're probably, I'm sure you're seeing lenders in the seven range. You know, I'm still in the six and a half range, but I guarantee you there's there's lenders in probably seven, seven, a seven a quarter. You know, Ruby and Jackie probably can maybe attest to that if they were, you know, so different people they work Ruby with. Ruby actually, right? Ruby has, has mm-hmm. a client. Um, Maybe you want to talk about that real quick, Ruby. Ruby has a client that uh, a down payment assistance. Uh, they came with their own lender, and what were they quoting? Seven and a half. 
Um, well, the lenders in the high sevens for down payment assistance and low yeah. eights. So they're wow. at a $300,000 house. They're looking at a payment, you know, 24 to 2600 um, So they're probably not going to be able to buy unless they just do gift money from someone and, um, you know, family or whatever and try to get seller concessions. So we're not going to be able to help them. Yeah, yeah I think I'll ride just... that one out. Or I might even switch yeah. lenders. Yeah, down payment assistance you got a good is, is one not right cheap. Here. I mean, <laughs> yeah, down payment well, no, down payment assistance is not cheap. I mean, it's it you're gonna it comes at a cost. I mean, it's not free money, and uh, typically you're gonna see a rate that's gonna be a, a half a point, you know, three quarter point point higher. You know, they're kind of fixed rates there, and um, that's why I try, try to tell people, you know. Down payment assistance really is your your money of last resort because the fees are higher, the rates are higher. You know they get that money somewhere, so it's not free. Right, and that's the thing that yeah. uh, a lot of people don't know. They can get gifted money from relatives or you know uncle or aunt or four hundred one k. They can you know I, that's why regardless of when they bought a house, I try to tell them that because a lot of I don't want to assume that people know where to get money from because you know they might have a. You know, a father, or a dad, or uncle that you know, like, hey, I'll, 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 I'll give you, you know, twenty five thousand to get the house or whatever. So, um, it's, it's really is one of those things that you have to kind of ask the question because you don't know, you know, know the answer until you ask the question because sometimes people right. will have that money available. But um, yeah, I mean, it's so it's rates have crept up. I mean, um, I think this is kind of a short term thing. I think <clears throat> Barry's still on the right path that. Um, that you know rates will come back down but you know i think this, this is a short term that the markets are kind of giving in to the, to the feds and saying the fed i you know we're just gonna sit here for a while and i this could be going on for longer than i think what people anticipate and this is just a I slush think it back clearly and forth. If, if rates if rates stay where they're at even just where they're at today i think it pretty much takes the wind out of the sails for the spring market um, I mean, it's not gonna be alarming but it's not gonna be as much. And we were seeing, um, and I'll show it in a chart here in a couple of minutes that, you know, January and the beginning of February was actually pretty good. Right. Um, it was. Yeah. And so it, this, and this, and you know, the fed is seeing those numbers too. And so are the bond traders and they, you know, they, they need, you know, there's a danger in cutting back too soon and re reigniting everything. And the, um, we'll go back. Can you go back to know, chart? Go back to our chart. Is still, um, for an inflation rate is still pretty, pretty aggressive. Yeah. This is January. You know, this is, this is this downward trend um, right here, uh, you know, down here I, 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 is uh, where, you know, we saw the trend, you know, demand pick up and it's been one of those things. So. If they revise the job report, could that have an effect, Pat? Yeah, yeah, they they always revise the job reports to see. You know, they're always revising it downward. It's it, it they never it never seems like they come in and say, "Yep, they were pretty much spot on." They will. I just think that um, there's still a lot of, you know, the Feds think there's demand, you know, inflation out there. I'm I do know that shipping costs. They said Barry had said that shipping costs are down like three and a half, three point two to three point three percent. Those are coming down, which is definitely deflationary, but. Uh, you know, purchase applications were down like 6%, I think, last week. And then they're down 43% year over year. So, um, but the activity, you know, I've been steady busy. I mean, it just seems like we've got, you've got some people that are just determined to buy a house. And well, the um, majority of the buyers I'm working with right now, it's all necessity. I've got several military um People with leases coming up and they're having the attitude that, you know, we, I even talked to my gal today and I said, you know, you need to, um, she came to me with a lender and I said, you need to touch base with your lender if you're not locked in and see where you're at, because we might need to make some adjustments. And she, you know, she said she had, but she's still determined she's tired of paying, paying somebody else's mortgage. Mm -hmm. And then I've got several mm -hmm. Navy fed people that, you know, they, they're being transferred and I've got a couple of people that are job transfers. So I, there's still yeah. going to be activity, but yeah, I mean, well, if we, we creep um, over seven, we're, we're going to come to a halt again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not, um, it's not going to put anybody in a terrible bind. If we slow down for a few months before we get in the summer, it's, it's, it's healthy. Uh, but um, you know, I, I, 
I'm not going to bet you that dollar that rates aren't going to go down in May because I, <laughs> I, for, I don't want to have to give you, it, this is my last one. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to talk about a video that came out this morning that, uh, you know, is getting a lot of attention. And, and once again, um, it's, it's this big highlight and this big number about how Phoenix is crashing and the numbers, although they're close to being accurate, they don't tell the story. They're trying to take the numbers to fit the narrative. And in other words, listings in Phoenix are up 190%. You know, one the fourth highest in the nation, I think believe is what it was. And uh, what were some of the other stats that were thrown out there? Oh, that our listing inventory is at an all-time all time high for the seven-year average. Okay, so... Seven-year average. Let's let's take a look at that. So it's now, I'm, I'm going to show this because I think it illustrates that when somebody comes out and just starts spitting that stuff out without really looking at the real numbers, they're doing everybody a disservice. I'm not going to show this to say, see, the market's not going to go down because it could. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I'm not going to say, well, it, this here's proof that we're not going to crash. You know, we might, I don't know, but I'm saying this, the way these numbers are presented are so off balance. It just drive, drove me crazy. So here's the true numbers. Guys got your calculators. No. We're 14,017, 721 listings. This is as of Saturday night. Last year, we were at 4,600. So if you divide this by that, and we did it earlier, what's that percentage, Pat? What did we come up with? 320%. 320%. So they said we were up 190% and that that's just awful. Well, I hope so. I mean, because 320%, <clears throat> we're still not what we would consider our average number of listings for this market. Now, they said this is a seven-year high, right? Right here? Yeah. Well, yeah. here's our extremes. And right here, our extreme says the highest we've ever been is 58,000. <clears> Typical, 27,085. Now, if you take that 27,085 and you divide it by the 4,600 of last year, that's 530%. And if we grow by 530%, the listings will be typical, not sky is falling. And so I think yeah. that's very disingenuous to, you know, to shout that number up. Now let's look at sales per month. We're down. No doubt. <clears throat> We've been down right here, but I put 2008 here. Now, if you look at 2008, we're sitting here at less than 3000 per month at a time when we had 58,000 listings. There's your gap between wow. supply and demand. That's why the wheels fell off the wagon. Yep. So then you look at months of supply. Okay. Our months of supply right now are 3.4. Average is usually about six months. Let's look and see if they have it here. Oh, they have oh months supply. Here it is. We had a 20 month supply back in 2008. Average is 4.3. Our lowest was less than a month. And right now we're sitting at set of 4.3 is an average 3.5. So I don't see any alarming numbers out there that you can make a video on that says that we're in deep doo-doo. No. I could make nope. up some stuff. I could tell you that that inventory number that we're seeing is going up at such a fast rate that, oh, no, I can't because it's actually going down. Yeah. So those, those kind of videos, I just want to, you know, straighten everybody out on that. But people gravitate towards that negativity the sensationalism red thumbnails with atom bombs and flames <laughs> that's that's what that's what shows but are you are you you know we're, we're in youtube world here so we see it but let me ask uh, the dynamic duo here Do, does anybody ever make comments on something that they saw on youtube as far as i heard or saw that the market's going to do this me? Absolutely. No, we're the dynamic duo down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're a ruggedly handsome <clears throat> Pat. Remember 
remember that. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I mentioned, in fact, I sent him your water videos. I just had a client that we were supposed to be listing his central Phoenix home and they were going to be buying a Buckeye and his wife is scared to death thinking, and they're not looking at new builds. Um, they're not looking and even the new builds they're permitted. If they're permitted, they they're good. And I explained to him, I said, if you're buying some land out there, you can't do a well and you're going to want to get permits later. You could possibly have a problem. Yes. But they're looking at resale. And so I sent him a bunch of your water videos so that he could show them to his wife. I've also had numerous clients that have talked about, oh, we see Phoenix is crashing. Um, in fact, some other gentleman that likes to make videos and act like he knows the market here uh, showed my client's house that's being built in Buckeye. And he was standing in Sundance talking about all of the vacant homes and showed rows and rows and rows and rows of them. I was in and out of that community so much and they are selling houses like crazy. Yeah, they have great incentives. Yes, there's a lot of homes under construction, but they're doing very well out there. And so he talked, I, he was standing right in front of my client's house. I was like, oh my Lord, she's going to see this. I'm, so I called her ahead of time. I'm like, <laughs> um, I almost said her name. I'm like, I just wanted to make you aware in case you see that she laughed because she's very analytical. She took her time. We looked at at least 30 different new homes, numerous different communities. She did all her research. I gave her the information. We don't ever push someone. We try to tell people, well, we want to be your knowledge broker and your agent for life and provide you the information so you can make the best decision for you. But there's so much clickbait out there. At, or I'm, I'm having to combat it quite a bit, but all I can do is give people the correct information and say, here, you make the decision for you. Yeah. Now, Ruby, you're in the new build communities quite a bit too. I mean, are you, and I know we asked this question last week. Are you seeing deep discounts and fire sales and desperation yet? No, actually they, um, they've been changing their, um, their incentives monthly. So it's not a weekly thing. It's not a, you know, drastic drop or a drastic increase they're just it's just just a monthly change slowly you know just coming along so interest and rates are still reasonable they're still buying them in their blocks i believe um so yeah we're we're just cruising along aren't aren't some of the builders you said talking about price increases coming lenar sent me a price increase yeah, yeah uh, I, so i did get an update from them today i didn't get a chance to open it now, Pat, you were saying earlier, and this um, before we got on here, but um, this pricing um, that is going on that from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is just really causing havoc in your industry. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it, it was causing. I mean, a it's, couple of weeks ago. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, every lender is going to be implementing at different times. Uh, some lenders are implementing it right now. It's for for, for loans delivered May first. Um, I believe that's the date, but basically they're, they're just, uh, they're taking from the higher credit buckets. Um, before if you had great credit, we're putting some money down, say at least five or 10, you know, five or 10% down. There's usually a, they have these, what they call loan level pricing adjustments for credit score, loan to value. And there's a whole chart now where it's going to probably they're changing the, the the a certain part of the matrix. Like if you're like scores like 720 to 700, 700, 720 to 730, it could be, you know, a quarter. I, I don't, the exact, there's all different types. I mean, there's little break points for every, I mean, it's the whole chart shows you it's minus 25, minus 50, but and a half a point, you know, on a, on a half a million dollar home, 400,000, you know, you're talking two or $3,000 difference. Um, it's anything, you know, they're also start to, starting to charge for if your debt to income ratio is over 40%, this going to be another quarter point hit. Um, so, you know, if uh, your debt to income is over 40, you know, on a 400,000, it's going to be another thousand dollar add on, you know, it could be another couple thousand dollar add on to cost. It's not going to be, it's, I don't know. Are what they just trying to, to say. 
Let me ask it this they're, way. They're, and they're just, basically giving the money to the poor, not the, to the lower credit scores. So they're taking from the, the higher credit scores, you know, and so they're not rewarding them. They're rewarding more of the middle scores like 660, 680. You know, it's weird what they're doing. They're like robbing from Peter to pay Paul. And um, it's not, you know, it's, it's just another, it's more of annoying. I mean, if I was buying a home and you know, my cost went up by another two or three, four thousand dollars, you know, that's more than annoying. It's money out of your pocket. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's just a money grab that the feds are doing. And when you're as a mortgage broker, you just get just pissed because it's like, you know, what else can you do to kind of hurt people? You're disincentivizing these people. It's like, ah, uh, you know, like people are not squeezing up as it is with inflation and rates going up. Now they're with rates going up. That adds, you know, that might bump your rate from say six and a half to say six and five eighths or six and three quarters. You know, it's, there's always little nuances. It's not going to be something that knocks the market to for a total loop, but it just, it's like a, it's a gut punch. And it's like, why, why are you doing this? You know, it's just, um, they're, they're just never there to help you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, what you, just, I'm very cynical when it comes to yeah. these programs that they come out with, because they never, they always have unintended consequences and they always seem to punish the people that were doing the right things and give incentives to yeah. people that perhaps weren't. And, uh, and credit score is a classic example. Now, I get it. People can have well, a bad credit scar f- score and for circumstances that are completely out of their control, so, you know, and so I'm all for, you know, trying to see if we can assist in that at some point, but, but why are you dinging the people that, that, you know, that didn't get hit that have the high sevens yeah. and the eights. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean uh, you know, that- and the thing of it is, and the, the thing of it is the government, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are in a conservative ship anyway. So the money is going into the treasury. All it is is they take these. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are not hurting for money. They're basically they've repaid back their money. You know they went under conservatorship and they had to repay back. You know a certain amount. They've repaid that back like um, twice, and they're they got billions sitting there, and they're just uh, um, it's just a money grab. It's just frustrating that they're not doing. It's just enough to really tick you off because, like you said, instead of you look at it, you're like, okay, it's another half a point. You know, half a million dollar home that starts with five hundred, three thousand dollars that you got to add in. And it, when it comes down to it, if, at the end, if I have to, you know, get the CD out and the debt to income ratio move from say thirty nine to forty one, all of a sudden we got a pricing hit. Now I've got to reissue, you know, maybe a new CD because my pricing, you know, changed. So this could have ripple effects for closing. Um, you know, somebody wants to close on Friday, but like, oh. We notice his DTI went over 40%, so we got to reprice it. And it's just crap like that that just does not make the, anything good for the industry at all. Well, I have a client that was supposed to close January 27th, and the prior week, they, you know, with she was through un- underwriting and everything, and evidently when they, they do something in this system to make sure she's still qualified, I'm not sure what the process is on the backside after it goes through underwriting. But um, so say Thursday before the weekend for the following week, she's supposed to sign her docs and close um, with the builder. They, the algorithm changed in the, in the qualifying system. So we still have it closed. She then didn't qualify when they pulled it the following Monday or Tuesday. So she, we, we had to get um, gift money from somebody. We had to get a co-signer. She had to go back through underwriting. They changed her type of loan um, and everything. So we we went from conventional to FHA. Now it's it's everything's changed. We still haven't closed. I thought maybe Wednesday or Friday this week, but it's still in underwriting, and it's been in underwriting for over a week. Ruby, I have a question. So nothing changed on her side. It was just the system when it ran back through. She didn't do anything to change anything. <clears throat> No, nothing changed on hers, but the way it was explained to me from the lender, um, the builder's lender was that, you know, the government, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mae, they make adjustments in their system yep. for whatever reasons. Yep. And I don't know how to explain that, but maybe Pat can, but it's frustrating. You're flying, well, you're flying blind. Well, for basically, a while they, they come out, Fannie Mae, Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they do revisions every, I don't know what they do there. They do uh, DU 3.2, DU 3.3, and they, 
I get these announcements all the time saying we're releasing the new Fannie Mae 3.0 or the um, or 4.3 on on. And I've had these, you know, last minute where it's like uh, if you ran something January 1st, but then if you rerun it, they always they do typically rerun it at the end to make sure that the proved eligible is still standing because that's the problem. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac changed the rules, algorithms during a month. And what we're noticing is that the DTIs, you know, they can they can change these algorithms based on the market. You know, if they want to tight, mm-hmm. if they see the market getting out of hand, they'll tar- they'll tighten ag- algorithms where you got an approval at say forty five percent debt to income ratio, but all of a sudden they change the algorithms that month, and forty five is too tight. Now you got an in- approved ineligible. Yeah, and that's exactly what yeah, happened. She's right I there mean, at last that minute. middle mark. Yeah, she's right yep. at middle mark. Yeah, it was so close I mean, anyway, that's why when you got somebody. When you have somebody on the edge, you have to be careful. Like when you're debt to income ratio, I've had those where, you know, you're like keeping your fingers crossed, hoping that nothing changes, but it's really well, nothing changes on there. But anything. basically, Fannie, yeah, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac change their algorithms based on what they want to see for loan loans coming in and they'll tighten up the screws mid month. And all of a sudden you're like, I've had this, you know, Facebook, I've had, you know, loan all of a sudden, I ran this loan. It was perfect. All of a sudden I ran it last minute and it's approved ineligible which means they don't like it now. And it, that's what could happen. Yeah, I feel and bad. I mean, it's, it's, to, it's happened. Yeah, and the lender asked to stay with the same underwriting underwriter um, as well. But then for whatever reason, they flipped it because it was a different type of loan to a different underwriter. And so we have, you know, it was starting all over. It's it's frustrating. My buyer yeah, and those poor sellers, they're back. trying to back up the moving truck and get out of there. And Well, it's yeah. a new build. It's, it's a new build oh, on okay. that one. That, that helps. But in more, yeah. I mean, you know, I like scheduling closings on Thursdays in case there's a hiccup. We don't, mm-hmm. you know, don't have to wait till Monday to resolve it. But things like this where you've, you've done everything, you've submitted, they told you you're approved, and then you're just getting ready to start packing. And then, oh, hey, no, we took a second run at the numbers and yeah. you can't get the loan. That would, that would, uh, you yeah. know, good thing. That you don't buy a house every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For for sure. It's too stressful. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't be able to deal with that. So it's bad enough just trying to walk through some of these transactions. Well, let's keep a track, uh, keep a close eye on these on these rates. I don't expect uh I'm not the rate expert, Pat is, um, but I don't expect much up or down in the following seven days. Do you? Not really. I mean, we've got some numbers coming out. We've got uh, inflation. Uh, inflation numbers are coming out here. Um, that the CPIs came out obviously uh, yesterday, but uh, that was really that was kind of you know, okay, kind of a non-event. We're getting past that, but now, like I said, now we're kind of going into this. The Fed, the markets are just starting to realize the Fed's going to keep the gas on for a while. So until we get some type of reprieve from there, we're just uh, we're probably going to see more of an up increase in. A little bit bump in rates, nothing crazy, but um, you know, it's not the trend is not our friend right now in the last week. Let me put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I logged no. on this morning. Like, Holy cow! Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But we will plow through it and see what happens. In the meantime, everybody have a great week. We will see you here next week, Pat. We will see you at Friday. See you tomorrow, at three o'clock. Yep. Uh, Friday. Show. Yep. Okay. Mick, Mick report. All right, buddy. Thanks.